once again you got the money before you gave them the goods or services that's an unearned revenue kind of situation or a, a customer deposit you might call it in in other words when you get the money you should record it as basically a liability down here in unearned revenue now logistically however as we discussed the, it's not as easy to put it in unearned revenue down here because you want to be tracking it in the sub ledger so if i go back to the tab to the left and we go down to the sales which is the kind of the customer center and then into the customers and if you're in the business view by the way that would be under the get paid and pay area and then the customers that's where the customers are located and then within within there you can you can then track your information by customer so if i went into this anderson guitars if i if i recorded something to unearned revenue it wouldn't be reflected here in the customer center which as on the bookkeeping side the accounting side is what i use to communicate with the customer so i would like things to link up they link up quite nicely if we use an actual receive payment form so we enter the receive payment before the invoice that usually decreases accounts receivable but now it doesn't have an invoice to apply to which means you have this outstanding what you might call outstanding credit that can then be applied to a later invoice when the customer pays so that means we're gonna we have this situation where it's not quite right when we get the first deposit from a financial reporting standpoint but it looks good it looks correct from a bookkeeping standpoint and that's why we're doing the adjusting entry so if i go to the tab to the right let's just take a look at the sub ledger for accounts receivable right click it on the tab duplicating it and we're going to open up another report on the left hand side reports on the left hand side we're going to close up the hand boogie and scroll down to who owes you and we want to open uh, the customer balance detail report customer balance detail let's run it as of a custom date of 022823 and so the total of this broken out by customer it uh, adds up to 231550 that should tie out to what's on the balance sheet as of 228 and the accounts receivable 2350 so that looks good and the issue was that we had a couple that had this negative receivable you can't have a negative receivable for a particular customer because that means that would mean that we owe them money which means it's a liability not a negative receivable therefore we did an adjusting entry for these two clients that had or customers that had a negative receivable for 450 and we increased accounts receivable over here we increased the accounts receivable for that amount if i scroll down and and we did that by the 450 and then the other side went to this unearned revenue the liability account so we just properly recorded it as a liability instead of a negative asset account so it's a little bit different than a book problem where you deal with unearned revenue in which case you're usually thinking about a situation where all the revenue that a company gets is like is from uh, unearned revenue like a subscription model in which case you would just keep on increasing unearned revenue when you you collect your your money on a subscription model and then you'd have to determine how much of the subscription had expired periodically at the end of month or year decrease unearned revenue and then record the revenue properly for the amount that had actually been earned in this case we're dealing with just unearned revenue for like a security deposit type of situation so it's it's a similar situation but you know it's a slightly different scenario here because we're dealing with the the concept of we we need to be able to be able to have some supporting information for the accounts receivable in the sub ledger and there and so notice that this adjusting entry does not have a balance sheet account and an income statement account it's an adjusting entry with two balance sheet accounts so it's not really like a classical adjusting entry which usually has a timing difference between balance sheet and uh, income statement type of account okay 
So that said, now we've done that, and I can see that over here in my sub ledger as well, because they forced me to to record something to a customer uh, whenever whenever I record something to accounts receivable. But I didn't want to record it to the actual customers in question, Eric Music here, uh, because that would add add it to the detail in their customer ledgers. Therefore, we created another account down here and just called it ZZZ, trying to put it at the bottom out of the way. And this customer account is going to have all our adjustment entries. They have journal entries in them. That's not what you usually want to see in a customer type of account. So that's why we kind of tried to bury it down here at the bottom because they're not going to match out. Usually you would see invoices and receive payments that tie out. And once they do, then this, this whole thing would kind of disappear. It wouldn't be on this report anymore. For example, here in this one and this one, you would expect it to tie out. It doesn't because we don't have an invoice and a payment. We have two journal entries. So it doesn't quite work the same way. That's why we put it into the account at the bottom. Now, remember, if you don't want to do that, you could create another accounts receivable account, but you'd have to set it up as something other than accounts receivable type of account, like other current assets, so that you don't have the sub ledger related to it. Okay, so now we're just going to reverse it as of March 1st, because remember, the, cust the, the bookkeeping process is not wrong. Their process is just fine. It's just that we need to make it the financial statement reporting more correct as of the reporting basis on a periodic basis, monthly or yearly in our day, in our case, as of February 28th, the cutoff date. So then I'm just going to reverse it as of the first day of the next period. Note all reversing entries are going to be like the first day of the next period. I'm not going to try to try to get it to be more correct for a longer period of time. In other words, you might say, Hey, why don't I just figure out when the invoice is actually issued in March for these items. And then if the invoice was entered in March 15th, I can do the reversing entry as of March 15th. And then the statements will be more correct for 15 days of March. But my point, my goal is not to make things more correct for 15 days is to make the adjusting and reversing process as easy as possible. Having all transactions on one day, sacrificing the fact that the financial statements will, will not be perfectly reported in the middle of, of the month or if I was doing this at the end of the year in the middle of the year. Okay, so then if I did this adjusting entry, the easiest way to do a reversing entry, I should say, is to look at the adjusting entry and then just do the opposite. So if I let's go back over here in unearned revenue. And if I go find the unearned revenue, where did the unearned revenue go? It is right there. If I go into it, then I could, I could then just say, okay, let's go into that journal entry and say, there's the, there's the transaction. I'm just going to do the exact opposite. So you might even take a screenshot of the adjusting entry and then reverse it. This one's fairly basic. There's only two accounts affected. I'm going to use a journal entry to reverse it as opposed to uh, using the register because of that issue with the name needing to be put in place for the accounts receivable. So I'm going to close this out. I'm going to hit the ham. Let's go to the first tab to do it. Let's first go back to the report, then go to the first tab. Then let's hit the plus button and go to journal entry. Now all the reversing entries are going to